this new drug that combines the llama laba combination has just recently come out on the market and and I'll tell you that I think there's a lot of enthusiasm in the pulmonary community about these drugs but you know the the evidence is still sort of catching up so the the patient for whom a long acting beta agonist inhaled corticosteroid would be indicated I think would be a patient who has a diagnosis of COPD but has some features of asthma. So we know that the, the evidence for inhaled corticosteroids are probably best in the asthmatic population. Um, so any patient with COPD who's say a smoker or a former smoker but who also has a lot of allergic symptoms, a lot of triggers in the environment and perhaps some variability in their FEV1 over the course of years based on seasons, based on allergies, things like that, that would be the kind of patient who I might have on a long acting beta agonist combined with an inhaled corticosteroid. Um, for a patient who has more sort of traditional COPD and fixed airways obstruction, uh, say an FEV1 in the range of 50% of predicted, that would be a patient who I would typically or historically have on a long-acting muscarinic agent such as teotropium and a long-acting beta agonist. And now this new combination drug is available. And I think, you know, we're going to see that that drug is increasingly used. Um, but I'll tell you, the, the data so far is is... It's very short term, so it's a 24 month or a 24 week trial that really looks at um, some pretty soft endpoints like a trough FEV1 or a, a peak FEV1. So the the improvements compared to the other the long acting beta agonist inhaled corticosteroid um, are, are fairly modest. So so to do the combined agent, given the challenges with cost and insurance reimbursement, et cetera. Um, has proven a little challenging so far, but I think that it's gonna, we're gonna see a lot more of its use in the future. COPD, it all depends upon what the clinical features are that you're treating. Sometimes you'll make these choices empirically. You'll try one inhaler for several weeks, another inhaler for several weeks, assess with pulmonary functions, or assess with the patient's symptom checklist. How much was their shortness of breath improved, their mucus production improved, um, did it cut down on exacerbations if you can follow them for long enough? So there is no pat answer to that. Sometimes you're surprised when a patient doesn't really seem to be that ICS sensitive and is better with an inhaler like a neuro, which they can comply with and which has more of an epitropium effect.